Uh, Helena, welcome. Um, I really love the background you your your have it. <laughs> it's really cool and uh, it's great intro uh, the background speaking uh, for for you. Um, Helena is a new media artist. She's uh, also independent curator and educator. Um, and um, her field uh, of interest uh, embraces hybrid art, uh, the new aesthetics, the Internet of Things, uh, and artificial uh, intelligence. So uh, she will bring these topics into her talk. Um, she also stands behind online events, uh, for example, Forecast 2020 Festival, uh, and I'm sure she'll be mentioning this one in her presentation. Um, and also data sets versus mindset, uh, post-Soviet explorations of the digital control society, uh, both really interesting um, um, events uh, and really great content there. Um, so yeah, the curating in pandemic uh, times from challenges to advantages, that's the name of your talk. Uh, so yeah, like we're starting right now with your topic. So the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me and for this kind introduction. I'm going to share my experience in doing creating online events. And uh, one moment. Um, I'm going to talk about um, I'm going to talk about my curatorial uh, practices. Uh, with forecast online festival and data sets versus mindsets and also if we will have enough time, uh, I will mention my project, Festus for Voices. And um, I'm starting from Forecast 2022. And uh, as a new media artist, I actually saw uh, potential opportunities in online formats. And um, I started to see the, these online formats as a source of advantages and uh, wanted to explore these new possibilities of online formats. And uh, actually that's why I don't really like these formats like Mozilla Hubs, uh, where we just uh, kind of bringing physical space into virtual space. So I'm trying to, to think about online space more um, like creatively, let's say. And um, well, as about online festival, um, this festival is self-organized uh, non-hierarchical initiative by me, organized by me and Ildari Kubov, uh, initiated by us. And Ildari Kubov, you can see him here. Um, uh, he's my friend and colleague. He's an artist and uh, a curator. And uh, when pandemic started, we both, um, probably as many people, we felt uh, isolated and frustrated and that's why we wanted uh, um, well uh, at, at the same moment actually we felt this urgency to to do something to act and that's why we started this open call uh, for online festival and we uh, received more than 120 applications from uh, different people from artists and developers curators and philosophers researchers, activists, writers, directors, PR specialists and copywriters, musicians and designers, art groups, institutions of contemporary art, universities and non-governmental organizations. And we were really uh, happy to receive all these applications. And, um, and since we decided to, to, to see this online festival as this, uh, um, organization with horizontal structure and with absence of any hierarchical relationships. We, um, uh, we invited all these people to Slack and we started to, to have these online meetings in Zoom uh, with all people. Of course, not uh, all of them wanted to, to, uh, to be organizers of the festival. So many people just wanted to, to join, to, to exhibit their projects. Uh, but uh, also I think there were 
a group like uh, 15, maybe 20 people who, who really wanted to, uh, to, to, to invent the festival, to decide what it will be. And uh, we started to meet regularly and we started to develop how the festival should look. And, um, and also we wanted to be transparent with all our decisions. That's why we voted for, for all decisions, like we voted for our uh, name of the festival. So the, the forecast 2022. And um, well, see, we, we started uh, to meet together and we decided, uh, we, we invented the structure of the festival. This is scheme like uh, uh, explaining the structure. So the idea is that all pages, all online uh, content should be interconnected. So all pages should be interconnected. Uh, they, they, they have to have these references to some other project. And um, well, and also our colleague de developed this connectness checker, this online tool to check if the project or page is interconnected with uh, another um, project. And we developed our curatorial statement, uh, this our manifesto. Um, I can I can read it. Um, in a planetary scale network of material resources and information, production and consumption, living and non-living agents, humanity faces many different issues like global inequality and climate change, disinformation, and the rise of civilian state. In the same moment, we are witnessing a global need to retribalize, to connect, to form another dimensions of social cohesion, another kind of interaction. Today, art is not enough. As artists, we must go beyond the limitations of artistic practices. We must rethink and reconstruct our relations to technologies, to ourselves, to each other, um, and non, to non-human actors around us. We demand a new par parliament of things and ideas. We must create communities that spread beyond artistic purposes to develop new forms of creativity, connectivity, and conviviality, solidarity in action. We consider any technology as a threat, but also as an opportunity to deconstruct, to hack, to subvert, to make it a tool for digital resistance. The exploration of this is the objective of Forecast 2022 Online Festival, a non-hierarchical self-organized initiative of artists, scientists, curators, developers, philosophers, designers. We form a laboratory which will present both familiar and experimental forms of online activities, online bars, concerts, performances, conferences, panels, readings, workshops, talks, lectures, online exhibitions and installations, etc. Uh, actually, we had many problems. Uh, the, the main problem uh, is that we, we don't have any budget. And that's why uh, we, we, we are still uh, working on the festival and we're still looking for, for fundings, applying to different uh, grants. But at the same moment, uh, we organized two online conferences. I think we were the first from, uh, one of the first from artistic communities who started to organize online conferences. The, I think the first conference uh, we did in April and um, the name of the conference is Seven the World. And uh, we, actually that was really inspiring experience because all people were volunteering uh, during, during the, the work uh, on the conference. And um, well, at the same moment we, we um, we, we were really inspired by this feeling of community, of uh, interconnection between different people uh, from all over the world. Um, well, and we organized two conferences, uh, two conferences online, and we are still working on the festival. And well, now let's go for the second project. Uh, data sets versus mindsets, post-Soviet explorations of the digital control society. Uh, actually, we started to work on the project in uh, September 2019, before the pandemic. And the project was meant to be a part of Ars Electronica Festival. And we, uh, we, we thought about the project as about showcase of Russian new media artists um, uh, in international context. Uh, but, uh, well, a pandemic started and Ars Electronica decided to do the festival in this hybrid format. 
uh, both online and offline. And each partner did something, uh, some, some events uh, offline for their local communities. And it's at the same moment, uh, uh, everything was also online at the festival plot platform. Uh, so we, uh, we, we were focused on the idea of this uh, digital control society because like as, um, but I don't know, maybe it's not uh, the same problem, the same urgent problem for Europe, but in Russia it was really, um, well, it was really a problem when uh, government started to control people during the pandemic with these IP cameras, with these special applications to track people. Uh, uh, well, and there were many cases when people were detained, like uh, when they broke quarantine because uh, they were seen somewhere in the city with uh, IP cameras. So we, we, we decided to focus on this problem, on, on these um, issues. And also we wanted to explore these boundaries between digital and physical spaces and all this spectrum of phenomena and consequences of the implementation of this algorithmic regulation and control tools in the post-Soviet context. And we actually decided to include not only artists from, um, from not only Russian artists, because we, we decided it doesn't make any sense like uh, to do uh, this showcase of Russian artists. We, we decided to invite also artists from Ukraine, from Kazakhstan, and we, we started to talk about this post-Soviet context, but not, not only focused in, um, on, on Russian problems. And um, well, and uh, also we we decided not to use this Mozilla Hubs because the, the main platform for Ars Electronica was Mozilla Hubs and uh, we didn't want to use it. We wanted to use something like special. And that's why we developed our uh, um, online interface, online interactive interface uh, on our website. And this is like a, um, like exhibition also uh, looked in physical space. Uh, yeah, I, I cannot uh, show you how it works, but you can check it uh, if you go to our website, datasetsmindsets.com. Um, but but uh, I can explain you how it works. When you uh, enter the website, you have two different options how you can see uh, the website. The, the first one is the gallery, and the second one is this interactive interface. And you can give, if you choose this interactive interface, you can give access to the camera of your device. And then it, it recognizes emotions of your face. And uh, the navigation responds to a dynamic system. It recognizes uh, your emotions uh, while, while you're uh, examining the, the works and responds to a statistical analysis that compares your individual experience to all experience of previous uh, visitors. And, uh, and then you have this like unique uh, user experience if you go, if you enter our website. Uh, and now I want to show you the website. Um, I, I don't have uh, this, uh, I, I cannot show you this interactive interface but because my camera is used by Zoom. Uh, so I can show you on the gallery. And uh, we had, uh, at the exhibition we had uh, artists from different generations. We also had, had uh, artists from this pioneers of new media arts in post-Soviet context like uh, Andrei Smirnov and Aristar Chernyshov. Uh, and we also had young, young, very young artists, like students of our, uh, art schools, for instance. And we had also projects from different contexts. For instance, we have projects uh, like Nothing Is by Andrei Smirnov and Ekaterina Trubina. This project is uh, from this media archaeological context. Basically, they used the same technology uh, which was developed by Leo Terman for spying devices. And I can show you when you enter, when you enter the room, uh, one moment, you see this lamp and they use this spy technology to uh, first to, to transpose sound into the light. 
but then if you enter the room, you see this lamp, but then you, you can use special device which reads sound from light again. So you can you can listen listen to the sound from light. Можно и подождать, если есть чего ждать. Здесь нам больше делать нечего. Не здесь, ни где-нибудь еще. Okay, we also had project uh, like this by Anastasia, Anastasia Lachina, Para Optic. And this project was inspired by the idea also from Soviet scientists. It was like a pseudo scientific idea that we can see with our fingers. And Anastasia was inspired by this and she developed this special equipment uh, to, to speculate on this idea. What could happen if you, we could see with our fingers? So let's watch this short video of communication. First, you scan your So they also had projects which could be seen as um, like uh, forms of artistic activism. Uh, projects like uh, Backlash, for instance, uh, by Ekaterina Pr Pranik and uh, Alexander Surchenko. Uh, they developed this special neural network uh, which can identify people on videos and pictures and uh, pe from pictures from protests. And this neural network covers all people except police. And so uh, this is also interactive project. You can you can drop picture here and see how it works. Um, and well, another project which can be seen in this context is a project by uh, where is it by Tall Hot Ninja. Uh, he developed this device. Uh, for independent communication. Hot Ninja is a multifunctional network device for autonomous activity in the city environment. Its main function is communication and propaganda through the Wi-Fi wireless standard. This is the hacktivism DIY response to attempt. Uh, I think video doesn't work. So anyway, I can I can just uh, tell you what is it. This is special device. Uh, which can uh, organize this uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. And then you can, when you enter, when you connect to this Wi-Fi hotspot, there is no internet there, uh, but you can communicate with people via uh, chat. Um, so this is the, like a response to attempt uh, by Russian government to control, to control internet. And well, and also we had this performance program, uh, which was uh, in physical space and also presented online. And we, we actually wanted to organize two modality of surveillance, uh, like uh, as a visitor of our website, you can uh, be surveilled and you also can surveil because our performance program was uh, imitating uh, IP cameras, IP CCTV cameras. 
Добрый вечер, друзья. Я буду говорить очень кратко на русском. these projects, uh, two projects presented in the context AI Music Festival, and this project was uh, also created with neural networks. Uh, text and music was uh, developed with AI, and um, the perform the, the, these performers, uh, they're performing some, some content, uh, the text, and also some, some music scores which were generated with AI and what else and well and we also had this online conference uh, during during the festival which was uh, presented at our electronica platform uh well of course uh, if we talk about uh challenges our main challenge was low budget again and well but at the same moment i think it was uh, it was really um, well challenging experience, but at the same moment really inspiring because uh, we 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 wouldn't be able to organize online conference and to invite all these incredible speakers we had uh, if we if we were doing this like uh, in physical space. Uh, but we, we at the same moment we were able to do this online. Yes. Well, and if we have some time, do we have some time? If we, if, if we don't have, I can stop here. <laughs> it's fine, go on. Okay, I can, I can tell you about Faces to Voices. It's not uh, curatorial, it's artistic project, but I think it's also interesting how this curatorial experience inspired me to do Faces to Voices. And in Faces to Voices, uh, which we developed together with my colleague Nikita Prudnikov, who is a musician, artist, and developer, and AI expert. And uh, we decided to use the same mechanics to use this um, camera of device, because any device, uh, now a laptop, a smartphone, uh, has a camera. And we wanted to also include this interaction in, into the project. And we were inspired by the project, by the scientific project, Speech, speech to Face. Um, and, and this is like a research, uh, also problematic, very problematic, where they used uh, neural networks to generate face using uh, the sample of speech. And we decided to reverse this, pro uh, this process and to use uh, the face of a, per uh, a face of a person to generate voice, imaginary voice. So we, uh, we, we have this um, facial recognition uh, algorithms and also some AI system which can generate a voice uh, using this facial recognition. And uh, here you can see how project was presented at Pixel Festival. This is Mozilla Hubs. Um, well, but um, uh, basically we have this website, faces to voices uh, dot com and I can demonstrate you how it works because it, it, it worked as live system during the festival, but now you can only listen um, to, to this, but, but now you can see how it works. And how it sounds also. One moment, I, f I forgot to say that <laughs> actually it recognizes your face, it generates your voice and adds it to the, the, uh, this interactive generative music composition. So, um, and that's why this generative music composition was changing like uh, constantly during, during the work of the installation and the festival. So and it was really interesting and uh, like to, to witness how it's changing day by day, hour by hour, uh, because of how many people were involved in the, in the, in the, in the process.
run moment. Neural networks are not so fast. <laughs> Doesn't sound like my voice, right? <laughs> okay, I think that that's all I wanted to share with you. Um, Thanks a lot, Helena. That uh, it's really different that you know what we've seen and heard so far, and uh, I'm actually curious um, who is the main audience and you know visitors of these online exhibitions and festivals because I can imagine it for some people it's too much it's just you know basically so weird that they don't see the connections but you know I know I, I can see like really good messages so I'm you know curious about the people who visit the exhibitions and what are their reactions to it uh, well, I don't really know about like uh, people in the world because uh, I well I, I know that many people visiting our website like because of statistics from from all over the world. Uh, but uh, well, probably some people interested in art and technology. Uh, well, so I think th this community mainly this community. But this is really sad also because uh, if we talk about Ars Electronica, for instance. If we, if we check how many uh, viewers they, they had uh, on YouTube, it's not so much. It's like uh, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands, but not so much. And uh, that's why I want to, actually we are, when, when we, we will launch this online festival as a festival, I, I want to collaborate with some uh, video gamers with this community to go, to go, to, to communicate with them because I think this, kind of messages that can be uh, understood by people, by, by young people, not only from artistic community, but like uh, in broader scale. And I think this is really, really important. And well, um, so I want to, 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 to get to broader audience, maybe to go on TikTok <laughs> and to communicate with this kind of audience. I think this is really important as an artist. I'm really inspired by this kind of platforms. I want to do some projects on TikTok, for instance, and I'm, I'm, I, had, I have some ideas uh, what, what we could do. So uh, this is really good questions. Like, uh, because we really need uh, we really need to achieve this kind of new audiences, mm -hmm. not to be focused on these artistic communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also I'd like to ask uh, maybe last question before the break, um, because part of your job, which is really important, is also to point out all the potential risk and dangers of the technology. So I'm thinking how do you share the concerns so they are accepted? And I mean it in the way that, you know, how you find the right balance. So it's not scaring people too much, but also be still a realistically critique and, you know, embrace and welcome the new technology. Uh, Sorry, not easy question. <laughs> not easy. <laughs> well, I think I never think about the balance because if you think about the balance, uh, what is the balance? I mean, mm -hmm. it's different for different people. I, I just uh, uh, have my own balance and I want to pro provoke with my projects. I just want to provoke. Well, I, I, I have this project, uh, artistic project, uh, Des Ex Machina. Um, and well, I connected to IP cameras and I, I sent messages uh, with AI to these IP cameras. Then they, they could talk to people, with cameras with speakers. They started to talk to people. And many people, uh, when, when I show this project, many people ask me and, and some people say, it's so scary, you, you did so bad thing, like uh, something like that. I don't think so. Maybe it's scary. For some people, it's scary, but it's a, it's a right fear. It's a good thing to just point out, to think about this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really important. So it's, uh, I don't know, I, I don't have any balance. Yeah. 
<laughs> but you know, like it's maybe the the balance it's not uh, what you want to achieve it's re really just you know the space to provoke and that's the way how to let people think about their own security and you know these things of course just uh, well i don't think uh, balance is something for others uh, it's not <laughs> our <laughs> unfortunately yeah, like, you know, and, you know, that's a fair, fair answer, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> no balance for others, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, uh, Helena. Uh, I think that we all have uh, another, another loads of uh, thoughts to think about. Uh, so I suggest to have a break now uh, to...